Thank you for tuning in to Audi Clinic today. My name is Aaron. This is Michael. What we have in the shop today is a 2003 Chrysler PT Cruiser with a 2.4. What it's in the shop for is a big lack of power and poor running conditions. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up, scan it, see if we have any codes. So what do you think, my pink helmet friend? Let's go for it. All right. After scanning the PCM, we found we had four trouble codes. A P0, I'm sorry, a P2305, a P0352, a P0351, and a P0300. In this case, just like any other case when you're troubleshooting diagnostic trouble codes, start with the first code first. So let's go in and see what a P2305, the ignition cool, number two, secondary circuit, insufficient isolation, see what that means by the manufacturer. Here's the code description for a P2305. Circuit is monitored with the engine running. DTC will set if PCM detects that a secondary ignition burn time is incorrect or not present, an error is detected. This is a one trip fault. Possible causes being an intermittent condition, a spark plug, ignition wire, ignition coil, or ignition coil operation. We're not getting a lot of information here off of the P2305. So let's go to the next code, the P0352, and see what information we get there. Here's the code description for the P0351 ignition cool number one or number two circuit. Possible causes, ignition coil, auto shutdown relay output circuit, ignition cool driver circuit ground, or open I'm sorry, cool driver circuit shorter to ground or PCM. You can see in our testing, our first step we know we're good on. The second step tells us to check the ADS relay output circuit to the ignition coil pack harness connector. Let's go ahead and do that Aaron. Right now we're in the auto shutdown relay function of our scan tool. In this function we can command the auto shutdown relay on and off. We're going to go to the car. We have our auto shutdown, we have our ignition unplugged, the connector to the coil. Here's our connector. Okay, we're going to have, we're going to back or probe the auto shutdown relay and then we're going to command that on and off to make sure the test light lights up. Right now we have it probed on the auto shutdown relay circuit. Our scan tool is commanding it on and off and we can see it's applying power like it should. Here's our schematic for our auto shutdown relay. Ignition coil here. There's the two feeds coming in for coil one and coil two. And then here is the dark green and orange coming from the auto shutdown relay. And if you follow your schematic down, it takes it all the way into here. ASD relay. So we know our circuit is good from here. From the PCM up to the coil we know it's good there. Let's go to the next step. Okay, the next step in the process is going to be number three. Turn the ignition off, disconnect the ignition coil harness connector using a 12 volt test light connected to 12 volts, probe the ignition coil driver circuit, crank the engine for five seconds while observing the test light. Does the test light blink, flicker? Go ahead and spin it over. Two, three, four, five. Okay, that was the Number one circuit, let's go to number two again. Okay, no blink, no flicker. Let's go to the next step. The next step we're going to perform is we are going to check the resistance on the first coil circuit and the second coil circuit between the ignition coil and the PCM. To do this, we use a ohm meter. Now you can see we've got our PCM unplugged and we're checking the resistance from the PCM to the coil connector. Right here on, I think we're on number two circuit, we have 0 0.2 ohms. Rule of thumb, anything under a half an ohm is good. Let's go to the next circuit, which should be circuit one. Let's probe it there and let's change it down here at the coil. Okay. 
I'm in there. Must not be in over here. There we go. There you go. All right. Now you can see we're at 0.4, which we're still under a half an ohm. So both circuits, one and two, from the PCM to the coil, seem to be good as far as a resistance test. Here we're looking at the PCM connector pinout diagram. It tells us that on, it looks like C2 and pin 9 and 10, which should be colors, looks like dark, dark blue and tan for number 9, and then black and gray for 10 should be our ignition cool driver number 2 and 1. Now on the car we had a pretty big discrepancy here because if you can see that is not a black and gray, that is a black and white and that is not a dark blue and tan, that is a blue and orange. Plus when we looked it up for an O2 or O3 it kept giving us the wrong information. We actually had to go to a 2005 to get the right PCM connector information. I don't know if that's a Chrysler thing or just really messed up for this one, but it, like, it took us a while to find it, like I said, for the connect correct connector view, we could not use a 2002, three, or four. We had to use a 2005, and keep in mind, this is a 2003 vehicle. So sometimes on vehicles, you have to go a few years up or a few years down to get the correct information because the manufacturer doesn't always put it out there correctly. We did skip to step six because step five didn't make any sense. <laughs> Trust me on that. Uh, step six says check to make sure there's no corrosion built up on the terminals or anything of that nature. Check the terminals on the PCM plus the ignition coil. Anywhere else, check for grounds, power, check for any kind of, uh, like I said, corrosion or dirty terminals that will cause a problem. I always use dielectric grease on any of my terminals. It keeps any kind of uh, debris out, also makes for a better connection, keeps moisture out. Right now, the next step, if the terminals are good, it looks like we're looking at a bad PCM. So I guess we'll replace the PCM and get the customer back on the road.